everybody, Mike from the Rewatch Project with Hannah and Mike podcast here with another first time watch reaction to an episode of Doctor Who. I'm a lifelong Star Trek and Star Wars fan watching classic Doctor Who for the first time. And I've reached the final episode of the Sensorites serial, namely the episode A Desperate Adventure. So a uh, quick reminder to please leave comments on the YouTube channel and also subscriptions as well. It really helps um, to uh, feed into the algorithm from what I understand. So if you watch these videos but you have yet to subscribe, if you could do me that small courtesy, I would appreciate that. Uh, I would also remind you to check out the Rewatch Project with Hannah and my audio podcast where we do rewatches of some of our favorite tv shows unlike this doctor who where i am watching for the first time and also please do check out some of the other stuff that's on the channel including live music performance reactions and also a bit of uh, cult tv and movie stuff that's on there as well but without further ado i'm looking forward to seeing how the sensorites wraps up so let's do this thing i can see that you stay alive your life means nothing to me let us strike a bargain. You will write the note. I will see you live. It's a good deal. Be wary of her. We cannot read her thoughts. She may be, be quiet. Right. I guess if you could read people's thoughts, um, being in situations when you can't would be uh, pretty stressful. You will stay here and guard her. She will guarantee the success of all my plans. And I should be given high office. I shall reward those who are faithful to me. Those round things in the wall, that's kind of a Doctor Who thing, isn't it? You see those, obviously, in the TARDIS. And in the same way that sort of the pill-shaped wall adornments in Star Wars are a symbol that you're in Star Wars, I feel very much like I'm in an episode of Doctor Who. Um... I think maybe Blake 7. Did Blake 7 have those as well? I just sort of associate those design elements from my childhood in England watching television. She couldn't have gone up to the spaceship. I if you'd have seen her or passed her on the way. Yes, That's a very simple note. To write this. You ever made her do minimum. it had no idea that I was being brought down here. Oh, I bet the city administrator had something to do with it. Barbara's but back. why kidnap her? I think the why is fairly obvious, wouldn't you? Your friends express so much concern about you. It's definitely a theme, isn't there? These internal power struggles with the guest um, species of the week. I agree to have you brought down to the sense sphere. There is a quality in human beings which intrigues me. Your concern for each other. I assure you the two men are safe. You know this idea of kind of elevating humanity in comparison to other races is something that Star Trek would do. Often you'll see in Star Trek that some of these, quote, unique elements to humanity, sense of individuality or mistrust of authority or, you know, the disliking of captivity are often hallowed as being these incredible things. And I think that one of the things that, that Star Trek does that I think Doctor Who does is this elevating of humanity, this idea that we are pretty awesome. And we get this reflected back at us by other alien races as well sometimes. Know where they are? Yes. But they asked me not to tell you what they are. that lasts in Dr. Yes, grandfather. Look, would you mind reading this letter? Look, whatever she wrote this with wasn't dry. I, I put my thumb on it and smudged it. And this is her writing? Yes. yes. And that smudge must have means that it was written just before we got it. Good bit of detective work from Susan there as well. She's definitely shining in this serial and contributing and thinking. And, you know, it's nice to see her being useful. Are you implying that your friend Carol is being held prisoner in this palace? Except the disintegrator room. Where's that? Below the courtyard. It is rarely... Sound like a very nice place. Well, no food with us, and the only water available is that poison water out there with deadly nightshade. It's a charming outlook. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when uh, he gets all gnarly. Hartnell's just the many faces of Hartnell. I, uh, but I do, I do like it when he gets exasperated and annoyed. How long are you going to keep me here? And she will die. Oh, Don't dear. be foolish. Put it down. No sense right should be humbled before a human creature. There you have that. Throw it down. Throw it down! Take him to the first elder. He's humbled I've now, you prick. I've imprisoned you once. Lost. I definitely think that one of the weaknesses of this storyline is the um what i mentioned in the last episode the, the, trying to keep track of which ball is in which red cup 
you know, um, the, this whole, the Sensorites are only recognizable by their rank or their station or their sash. Uh, so it does feel like, you know, a lot of this, although they're an interesting race, um, this keeping track of who's who and who's backstabbing who when, you know, they're all quite interchangeable and not necessarily super engaging, I think means that those scenes that concentrate on this, probably not the most uh, exciting Doctor Who has been made so far. But fortunately, we've got our main cast getting to do some interesting things. And also, you know, the idea of these um, quite nervous bureaucratic aliens who have this monstrous visage is quite interesting. But I can see why this might be considered middling. But uh, but let's see. Let's see if they land the plane. And unarmed in the aqueduct. Yes. I will give you all the help I can. Oh, it's come round. Well, whatever's out there hasn't attacked us yet. Mm. Oh, this is good stuff. This is the... Getting into hide behind the sofa territory here, aren't we? Courage, my boy. Both hands, come on. Something lurking in the darkness. But it's okay. You've got your brave granddad with Doctor. you. Hmm? What have we got here? Hmm? Doctor, it was a man. Susan will stay here and direct us. Yes, then we can both guide we can guide them both out. My scientists tell me that you do not <laughs> So many fluffs in this season. I think they'd all just been out on the lash like the uh during this time. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, again it's and I noticed one of the um commenters on the YouTube channel left a comment about sort of echoing what I was saying in the last episode about um, the, the charm of this, the fact that once you're a fan of the show, it's okay to kind of give them a little bit of a nudge. But, but also whilst acknowledging that, you know, we do make flubs in uh, real life. Hell, I'll have made about 30 edits to this video and I'm just watching an episode of Doctor Who. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all in good fun. Not require the use of our mind transmitters. When I listen to you, you who are so young among your own kind, I realize that we sensorites have a lot to learn from the people of Earth. There it is again, you know, this uh, humanity. You're awesome. Well, grandfather and I don't come from Earth. Oh, it's ages since we've seen our planet. It's mm. quite like Earth. But at night, the sky is a burnt orange and the leaves on the trees are bright silver. My mind tells me that you wish to see your home again. And yet there is a part of you which calls for adventure. Interesting. So orange sky and silver leaves. I just wonder if will we ever see this place in the show, this place that they come from. Uh, again, this is where my ignorance of Doctor Who is kind of a beautiful, exciting blue sky thing. I'm looking forward to getting answers to these things, potentially. A wanderlust. I'm loving I'm the cake. The intersections, the pipes. Perhaps they're preparing an ambush. <laughs> and you're a cheerful soul, I must say. I assure <laughs> you, dear boy, my spirits couldn't be higher. The the relationship between the Doctor and Ian is probably my favourite chemistry in the show so far between the characters. You know, because it was quite combative and kind of alpha male standoff initially. Uh, and they still have those moments. Um, you know, Ian's a very straightforward kind of guy. And the Doctor, of course, has his eccentricities and his foibles and his hubris. But they do enjoy each other as well. And I think that's a tremendously appealing relationship. And the fact that the sheer likability of these two actors is really wonderful. And I'm really curious to see what the show's like when we do have personnel changes which inevitably happens in a show that's been running for 60 years um but it's definitely one of the elements of the show that i enjoy the most and it's fascinating doctor oh, hello. oh don't interrupt your boy it's most irritating <laughs> it's almost like abbott and costello i know therefore they've got giant pencils you have come at last Follow me. He is going to talk to you. Yes, I thought it'd be a third. Yes, the commander. Yeah. You'll have to talk to him. Follow me. Okay. Precursor to Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Great sound design there. In case we have to make a run for it, my boy. I'm glad you're on my side, Doctor. 
It's almost the spirit of um, the Boy Scouts here, isn't there? You know, all of those useful tips that you learn in the handbook as a child, you know, which would have, of course, been completely ubiquitous in the uh, in the mid 1960s. They certainly were in the 70s when I grew up. Well, this is the best news I've had for a long time. I'm very glad to see you both. Did you have a rough journey? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'd Let's say have indeed. Down on number one. Yes. They're very rough quarters here. You'll have to excuse that. I love the kind of gentlemanliness that's maintained. You know, they're apologising for the state of the environment. You know, it's great. You know, maintaining civility in the face of adversity is a uh, wonderful thing. Understood. Yes, sir. Blimey. Have to keep discipline up, you know. But they're all good men. Very fine. Morale's very high here. What, what? Sit down. The war with the Censorites is over. You do realise that this war has been fought by me and my men here? Any treasure trove is ours. That's quite understandable, isn't it? Mm, cold fever. And I'm prepared to back that statement up with force if necessary. I have good supplies here. Loyal All men. right, mate. No, number one, not allies. Spies. Mm. I thought so, it was so, a bit so, so. good to be part of the committee. Here to welcome you. We all came down here to take you out again to the surface. Buy into his psychosis, success, Doc. What's going on? Yeah, cool. And who is this? Uh, this... This is uh, our navigator. She... I wanted to, but that would not be the way, would it? No. He could have destroyed the entire Sensorite nation. Yes, but the fact is you didn't kill him. Shows great promise for the future of your people. Wow, that's Star Trek. I mean, before Star Trek. Playing with the idea of making assumptions about people based on appearance, about, you know, learning to be pacifistic. Um, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I don't Star Trek really. Was it, I don't even know if they were even aware of Doctor Who, but I definitely think that, you know, there are products of the same time in the same genre. So, yeah, it stands to reason that there's going to be similarities, but it's very interesting watching this from a Star Trek fan's perspective, that's for sure. Captain Maitland has agreed to take the others back to Earth. They were completely insane. Ooh, spaceship, very nice. Well, at least they know where they're going. Implying I don't? Hmm. I didn't mean anything. So sort... you think I'm an incompetent old fool, do you? Now, Doctor, I never Since said that. Since you are so dissatisfied, my boy, you can get off the ship. And the very next place we stop, I shall take you off myself. And that is quite final. Carry on. Are you serious? Seems like a real turd. Um, okay, initial takeaway. He kept the cape. <laughs> so that's that's good news. Um, but yeah, interesting. There's a lot of talk about you know their future and the aimlessness, the home world of Susan and the Doctor, and this odd little spat at the end. Um, curious to see what happens in the next episode in regards to that. So yeah, again, mid-level episode here. I don't think it was bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think that the um, the local politicking was spread a little bit thin. And I think that was exacerbated by the spot the Sensorite, uh, you know, ball in the red cup uh, syndrome that I mentioned earlier on, kind of gets a little bit tiring and confusing. But I think that the, the, the enriching of the mythology of the show, Susan getting a little bit more to do, and just the, the camaraderie and the chemistry of the lead performances uh, helped carry this through and meant that it was never not entertaining. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting to the next episode of Doctor Who, which is the, let's have a look, what's it called? So the next episode is A Land of Fear. Again, totally flying blind here. A bit like our heroes in the TARDIS in many ways. I don't know whether this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parter. So uh, we will find out soon. Again, really would appreciate subscriptions. Subscribe to the channel. Then you will get alerts every time a new episode comes out. And also likes and shares are very much appreciated. Check out the Rewatch Project with Hannah and Mike Audio Podcast. And also take a look at some of the other reaction videos and analysis and commentary of everything from live music performances to 80s action TV shows. So I will be back very soon to get on to the next episode of Classic Hartnell Era Doctor Who. Goodbye.